I was scouring the internet in a shark-like frenzy to find my next topic to discuss when I stumbled across an interview the famous fitness and nutrition influencer Mr. Thomas DeLauer hosted with a peptide clinician, Dr. Joy Kong, who is triple board certified in addiction, psychiatry, and anti-aging. In that interview, there was a discussion of a peptide that I'd never run across before, but seemed to have Mr. DeLauer and Dr. Kong really quite excited, especially for its metabolism effects and anti-fat gain effects, like those one might expect from something like a GLP-1 receptor agonist that we've seen become extremely popular of late. So we'll see if there's any scientific merit based on a big study that Thomas mentions, and then we'll discuss how to increase this peptide in ourselves. The peptide is named MOTC. When it comes down to like fat loss in general, I think let's give kind of a soup to nuts breakdown of what happens with the mitochondria and fat oxidation to begin with. Because I think, you know, we can hear people say, okay, yeah, it's going to help the mitochondria, but how is the mitochondria actually, what is beta oxidation? What's happening there? Well, it's a uh, utilization of, uh, so it's, it's the, the biochemical process of how fat is digested and metabolized. Um, I, I don't know the exact bio chemical pathways, but uh, but definitely if you increase the efficiency of that process, then you can grab more fat cells and actually use your fuel much more efficiently rather than somebody who, who can't really produce energy from that process easily. Then fat will sit there and then you are still sluggish. So if you can enhance this process, all of a sudden you have weight loss and enhanced energy level. So we need to have efficient fat metabolism to be able to lead to greater fat loss. What does that mean? Well, as a quick correction to Dr. Kong, fat cells aren't grabbed themselves. In fact, it's the fat molecules within the fat cells that are released into the bloodstream and then delivered to various energy demanding cells. Once inside these cells, to their point, fat molecules are taken up inside mitochondria and undergo a biochemical pathway called beta oxidation. I won't bog this down with too much more complexity, but since your fat molecules are these chains of carbon atoms, so beta oxidation is the process where uh, pairs of carbon atoms are lobbed off of the chain and eventually get converted to usable energy by the mitochondria. There's a lot of complexity there, but we have a lot of uh, much more interesting things to get to, so we'll leave it there. But just know that uh, for you to lose body fat, your fat cells must release or themselves convert fat molecules into usable cellular energy called ATP. One of the things that I've seen with MOTC that's particularly interesting, and you know, we don't have to get too far in the weeds of this, is, is uh, how it actually works, how it actually is created. So for I read a study earlier this week that was quite interesting. It was, I think, it was a nature communication study. They had human arm and they had a, a rodent arm with it. I don't know if you've seen this paper, but on the rodent arm of it, it was really fascinating. They saw like these massive changes in like tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, like massive reductions. There was even, I think it was like a 21% reduction in obesity when they were feeding them a high fat diet to try to induce obesity. So there was like a massive just like sort of blockage of like um, basically lipogenesis to begin with. Okay, let's start there. First, Mr. DeLauer correctly mentioned that there was a rodent arm where much of the research was performed, although there was also a human part that we'll get to. First, did these animals experience a blockage in fat gain, obesity in those that are exposed to this MOTC peptide? Yep, he's right. As shown here, in fact, he downplayed it or just misremembered some of the, the numbers. The effect was closer to 50% or more. We see the relative uh, fat mass on the vertical axis and we see the time on the horizontal axis. The black dots are the control mice, those not exposed to MOTC, and the two red conditions are the ones exposed to MOTC on a high fat diet. That's the HFD up top. So a huge protective effect against fat gain specifically. The data I just showed you is in CD1 mice, which are outbred mice, meaning that they are genetically distinct, like most humans are. They repeated these experiments in the more traditional genetically similar C57 black 6J mice and showed similar results. Okay, pretty impressive, but how does it do that? Well, 
Remember, when we discussed beta oxidation, how it's a critical biochemical process for fat molecule utilization for energy, the researchers measured in muscle cells through a measure called oxygen consumption rate. I've actually had the pleasure of doing these experiments myself, as well as working with these uh, cells, which I'll tell you a bit more in a second. Oxygen consumption is related to a mitochondria's ability to oxidize or utilize substrate for energy generation. In this case, two high concentration of fat molecules palmitate in this situation. The cells were either treated with MOTC or not. And we can see the control condition did not experience an increase in oxygen consumption, but the MOTC peptide exposed cells did. This would suggest that the cells take up fat molecules and oxidize or utilize them to a much greater degree that the overall fat gain is significantly reduced, even when consuming a high energy diet. Instead of being stored in fat cells, the fat molecules are eliminated through beta oxidation and mitochondrial metabolism. Super cool. Two quick cautions here before we move on. One, these are myoblasts. So the cells were immature muscle cells, results that might differ in more mature cells. I doubt it, but it is a possibility. Second, this is one measure. So we'd likely need more to be sure of this being a main mechanism at play here. Okay, I'm gonna get into some more details on how MOTC works, including some more discoveries related to the peptide in the extended version of this video that you're watching. If uh, you're a get to the point kind of person, it's probably not for you. But if you wanna learn uh, a lot more about this peptide, join the Physionic Insiders Research Review. You get access to exclusive library of videos like uh, the one that you're watching right now, but you also get weekly research reviews, uh, private podcast access, and we'll get to engage in live sessions where we discuss uh, the science even more. There's more perks, but uh, you get the idea. The link is in the description if you're interested. Now, before we go onto the human data and how to increase this peptide in our body, let me discuss one more metabolic effect. We've been over how it leads to reduce fat gain, and we saw one way that it could do that, enhanced fat molecule utilization. However, there's another metric that extends beyond just looking at isolated immature muscle cells called an RER or respiratory exchange ratio. If RER is lower, it means that the body on average is using more fat for energy. If we look at that data, we have the RER on the left side. Remember, lower is more fat utilization in metabolism. Now, there are four conditions here. They're separated not only by MOTC peptide exposure, but also by age. During a big chunk of the day indicated by the p-value well below 0.05 there, all conditions except the old non-MOTC exposed animals have reduced RER. Interestingly, younger mice exposed to MOTC do not experience a reduced RER, so the effect is age dependent. All of these data indicate that MOTC peptide has a metabolism effect, but the effect might be more pronounced in older subjects, in this case, animals. Anyway, let's discuss the human data, but let's have Thomas DeLauer explain the findings first. And the human arm was they had subjects do like four hours of exercise. They were relatively sedentary people that did four hours of exercise. And there was afterwards a 12-fold increase in MOTC. And that was one of the first like major indicators of like, okay, this is secreted or created or produced when we exercise, just like GLP-1 is produced when we eat fiber, when we eat protein, et cetera. Yeah, so he's absolutely right. Uh, we can see the experimental design in humans here. They measured peak VO2, so a measure of cardiorespiratory function, and then 48 hours later had people train for 10 cycles of one minute at peak or near peak VO2 with uh, 75 seconds of active recovery between cycles. During and after, the researchers took muscle biopsies and blood samples. Blood samples only during the uh, exercise. Here are the results. You can ignore the left side unless you're a molecular biologist. You'll understand that section. The two graphs are for muscle on the left and blood on the right. Exactly to Thomas's point, MOTC peptide levels, the actual protein was around 12 times elevated. In fact, while the results indicate the effect is transient, it does seem that during and immediately post-exercise, there's an elevation. Technically, after four hours, there's no longer an elevation, but that might also be because the standard error bar there is massive, indicating a lot of spread in the data. So yes, 
we can produce this protein in our body through exercise. So could this be another of many, many mechanisms by which exercise improves our health? Although admittedly, we don't generally see much fat loss from exercise alone. That could be explained by the transient nature of this peptide. Maybe if we get to a point where it's always present, we might see some profound effects, something to keep an eye on. The takeaway here is one, yes, MOTC looks like a promising peptide based on these preclinical data. Two, it does not function the same way that GLP-1 receptor agonists do. And I don't think that we have enough data yet to say it's better. Uh, we're in early days. However, three, MOTC is produced during exercise, but the effect is transient. That all said, there's only one final thing to say. Have you seen this video? No? This is one of my favorite videos. Okay, to be honest, I don't know this video well, but it might be worth it anyway. I'll see you over there and bring the Mott C with you.